keep on chugling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love CCR, though. I'm not going to lie to you. That black screen took a while. Oh, hey. Yeah, he sure did. Had to buffer. This has gone far enough. Oh, he has a gun now. See, like, Warren's like, no. Stop. Oh, you can't fight him. He's a buddy. If you strike him down now, he'll become more powerful than you could ever imagine. He's, like, the only one that wasn't, like, fucked up, though, Maester Keenog. I don't know. I feel He's pretty evil, though. Or am I thinking of somebody else? Um. Where were you hiding that? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Plus, that's your basic rod. We're way past that. Yeah, so anyway. this point in the game. <laughs> yes, you're back on... The, your namesake is back on the screen. You corruption, the corruption, corruption. You would play at marriage just for a chance to send me? Your resolve is admirable. All the more fitting to be my lovely wife. So I'm assuming this whole ceremony is taking place at the very Stop. top of the temple. But yeah. it's crazy that it's above the clouds. Do you not value you? Actually, you know what? They didn't have to answer this because in 10 2, you can return to Bavel, but you return to like the bridge and the temple. Mm -hmm. You don't ever you see the rest of this giant city that's supposed to be there. Yeah. Because anyway. they never bothered to render it. It's fine. Yeah, it really. Is this is the guy I'm thinking of. This oh, is no, the no. The, I'm talking about the guy that's like the warrior monk that was... Yeah, the fat dude. He's like, at least like trying to be decent. And the, the Ronzo maester is too. Like, they're yeah. the only ones that are like, you know, we're trying to really do our job. And then Titus summons Ifrit. <laughs> Why not? It would be par for the course, really. Yeah, Mr. Micah is the one that's really evil. Mm hmm. Marry me, Asian lady. <laughs> Did no one. Uh, hmm. I guess we'll bring this. I guess I'll bring this point up when we get it later into, like, you know, the whole the truth of Yevon kind of thing when it hits right. later in the game. Because it's really. It's going to be. Way too distracting to get into what I want to nope, talk about. Nobody right saw that coming after six. Yeah. Where Clown Prince McFuckknuckle became God. Well, in Final Fantasy, he's always had a penchant for killing God. Well, yeah. The if they're really, one, the they're really one. heavy handing that one, aren't they? <laughs> the first one is very, very much so. Yeah. You know, there's you, we talked about uh, in the last episode there being things and you know, like you want to see more more interesting. You're more interested in the backstories of certain characters. Yeah. I want to see like and talk about seven. I I'm the, I don't care about the current thing. I want to see like the centras and the ancient like that Ares is like part of. You know. Yeah. Like I want to see that race and like what this demon from the skies that is Genova and then Sephiroth like. Let's hear more about that kind of stuff, because that's, you know... That's why I'm all, like, fantasy all the way. I know people like to bash on fantasy, because it's like, weird, everything's derivative, and mm -hmm. nothing's original, and like, but you can, you can make up anything, mm -hmm. anything, and put all this depth and everything into it, and the, the better you are of a storyteller the better it is you can like leave little pieces of of little hints of things that happened Maybe long no, ago mm -hmm. that you don't even need to touch on You're it just uh, lives up to the imagination don't worry that's what uh this is foolish. i talked about um evangelion i've seen that movie watching that again the one movie that they they actually threatened the uh ano the guy who created it um mm -hmm. He actually put in the movie snippets of emails of death threats they got because they didn't like the way the original series ended. Because it got real introspective and, like, the art style broke. Like, basically, like, we're out of money. He's like, okay, but I have a great idea. Right. <laughs> Even though we're out of money. But, um, the, the, like, the people get so passionate about it and they're, like, writing death threats and 
oh, you ruined it. Game of Thrones is a great example of that. Yeah. Because people are like, oh, it ended like so. Like, was it ever going to be able to live up to your expectations, though? That's how it is. The you longer know? something stays stays in the works, the more and the... Yeah. Like, uh, that's the deal with um, Half-Life 3. The yeah. reason, like, they think it's never going to happen because it can never live up to the hype. Also, this is badass. Yeah, this is really cool. I like the song. I really like the song on the album that plays to it. It's just called "I Can Fly," based on what Ema says. But it's mm -hmm. just like you think she's gonna. I kind of knew she wasn't gonna kill herself, but at well, the same yeah. time, you're like, "What? How is she gonna get out of this predicament?" I like how. <laughs> I like how just a couple seconds ago, while you were talking about it, Evangelion, mm -hmm. how she wipes off her lipstick like I'm not fucking around no more. Mm -hmm. what? Oh yeah. That was great. And all that flash bomb. Um. Let me go. I'm gonna kill that Seymour. You not said leave. This leave. scene became very easy to we'll join up with her later. <laughs> it reminds me of just watching football last night. The fact that like Kamari's pushing Titus around. Cause uh, Where did you I'm go? a Cowboys fan, and uh -huh. uh, the one guy uh, from the Eagles tackle Dak, and literally like got in his face and stuff. Oh, and he's nice. lucky, like. The big guys, like, the refs broke them up before the big guys got there. I even texted my cousin. I said, Look, listen, if Zach Martin would have got there, he would have punched this guy and he would have flew <laughs> 10 feet down the field. <laughs> and it would have been this first man, down. This man bench presses 500 pounds. You can't fuck with him. And it would have been first down. <laughs> <laughs> Who won that game, by the way? Dallas did, like, 27, or like, 37 to 10 or something. Jesus. Bet you're missing foals now, aren't you guys? Bet you're missing them real hard right now. He said, listen, Dallas gets, they got that win, they're 4-3, and three, they're ahead of the division, they have next week off, then they don't play again until next, till the Monday night game against the Giants. And yes, the Giants have their new quarterback, but they're still the fucking Giants, and it should be another easy win. Yeah, I was going to say, Love and life right now. The Giants aren't great. I, like, they won... So Two Super Bowls, I think? Yeah. Yeah, like, they're still, like, even though they have that many, really aren't, they're okay. <sighs> the Cowboys and the Eagles are, like, on the same level, I guess that's where they're rivals or whatnot, but, like, eh. They've been in the same division, and, like, we, I don't know, it's just hatred that, <laughs> it's not a friendly rivalry, even, like, I can have a friendly rivalry with my friends who are yeah, fans of it, but it's, like, as far as the team, like they hate each other because they're both like loud, outspoken fan bases. So it's like, of course, they would be natural enemies. Yeah. And they put them in the same fucking conference with each other every year. Same with uh, Steelers and Ravens. Like mm -hmm. the Steelers, like I, I live around uh, several families of Steelers fans and Ravens fans, and so like the divides that you get among people and the rowdiness that you get out of them is. Insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can avoid it as much as we want, but at some point we're going to have to talk about this cloister trials. Uh, I'm football, sorry. Football, football, football. <laughs> okay, so... Let's explain all the rules of football <laughs> before we get into this. Oh, I, I, I happily would. <laughs> Alright, so what we do in this one is they're a little... I, lo I love the design of it, the little, like, pseudo-techno floor going on here. But, um... What we have is glyphs that control the arrows of where we're going. Now, if you don't know or have a guide like I did at the time, and I still use a guide for, like, there are some cloisters I could do from memory. Uh-huh. I think all of them I did from memory in this playthrough, except this one, because, like, I don't remember where to turn to get what orbs, and then, you know, because there's a lot of steps involved, especially if you want to get the destruction sphere to be able to get <laughs> anima later. I think you can come back, come back to this place, but just do it right the first time. Right. Yeah, this uh, this one hurts my eyes. It reminds me yeah. of some weird thing to, to compare it to, but in uh, Pokemon Black and White, there is a gym where you're, it's basically a neon roller coaster inside of a gym. Which uh, first which gym was that? What gym leader was that? That was, uh, uh, I don't remember what the it was. The Electric Girl? The Electric Gym. Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> it's the last main series game that I played. 
I'm still playing them. I've only played through X and Y and uh, Sun and Moon once, though. I haven't really gone for repeat performance. Oh, I didn't no, I'd, I'd play them more. I just, I got a DS way late in its life cycle. Yeah. And uh, bought it online and bought a copy of, um, I think, Sapphire and, uh, um, White. Yeah. No, black, because I, oh, I had the forest at the end. Um, no, black, white's the one with the forest. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I and and the better one. Yeah. Because, uh, in... I still think... <laughs> I, people are going to hate me for because, you know, there's always... Especially on the, the 4chan Pokemon board, there's always the, you know... Which gen's better? I, yeah. I still say Gen 2 is amazing. Um... I still Pokemon just... Johto do 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 do. do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole new world. That is that is that is the equivalent of like the Digimon like <laughs> butt rock rock. <laughs> no, it's great. Which I've been reading a lot of lately. I don't. I, I admit it live on the you know the airwaves. I've been reading Digimon fan fiction at work. That's cool. Hey, it's probably a good can, amount of it. Listen, it, again, again, like I said to you, it's. You know, to read other stuff to inspire yourself, and yeah. <laughs> there's something so interesting about knowing characters that are normal ass people. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. Yeah, because it's like their, you know, their mm -hmm. abilities or whatever come from the companion they have. It's kind of the same as if you were to write about. Oh, I might write about characters from Gundam that don't have the Gundams to fly <clears throat> right now. They're just right. going to be people, you know. It's like, oh, and now he's addicted to heroin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Took right. a dark turn, but I'm on board. Right. I'm interested. Let's see what's going to happen to his heroin addiction. <laughs> I don't know where I saw where I saw or heard this, but I think I think it was on a podcast yeah. where someone was saying that the reason fan fiction exists primarily is because you know uh, the actual media that's created, so the people who make that media. They're trying to give you the plot as it is, like, the interesting parts. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the job of the people who write fan fiction to put in all the menial parts. Because mm -hmm. the, that's, actual that's creators, yeah. the actual creators don't want to do that because they just want to move on with the plot. But there's just as much value in like the, the, the menial downtime. The slice the, of life. The, stuff. the, the hero's journey. Like, yeah. Yeah, the slice of life where it's like, you know, we're going to write about... I mean, it, it's not. It can be good or it can be like write about like a vacation that everyone takes right, or yeah. something. And just so, what did Stewie Griffin say in one of the old Good Family guys? Some some friends become enemies. Some enemies become friends. Some characters grow. You working on that story, Brian? <laughs> but you know, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, you really do need to see the menial stuff because it makes people more human too. It does. Because like, it's like you could be. <clears throat> Oh my god, I fucking hate this fight. <laughs> it's so... It's it, Tron! We're playing Tron! <laughs> we're going inside the game! Pretty much. <laughs> There's, um... I don't remember why I was going to make this point, but I was telling you uh, before we started recording that I was listening to Wheel of Time again, which yeah. is, like, the ultimate, lengthy, endlessly going... Uh, full of side quests uh, mm -hmm. piece of media ever. This 14 book long uh, epic fantasy trilogy, uh, uh, series. And um, there, I listened recently to a, uh, uh, an interview with the, the, the original author Robert Jordan um, and he had an interesting point to make that I feel like a lot of fantasy purists would like want to murder him for saying this but guess what he's already dead fuckers um he uh he was saying how he hates uh lord of the rings because it's unrealistic saying like oh yeah this random stranger comes to town and is like hey i want you to help me save the world and they're just like all right govs let's be on with it then mm -hmm. um but you know that's not really like talking about um realistic people as if they were real people in these these characters mm -hmm. 
if you if if someone came to your house tomorrow and said, "Hey, you are the savior of mankind. You are literally Jesus." Would you be like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'll just drop everything and go do that now." Now you'd be like, "Fuck you, dude. You're not you no. I'm mm. not. I'm just a dude. I'm well, just a guy." That's uh you know, Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey is yeah. kind of the template that a lot of people use, and why not? But um, it needs to have, like, an inciting incident, which it kind of is missing, because Gandalf shows up at the door, he, come, he goes to the Shire, he comes in, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, he, he just has he has a few of the, the dwarves come with him, and they all just start showing up. Uh-huh. And they talk to Bilbo, and it's there's nothing. Yeah, there isn't really an exciting incident other than like, hey, come with us and do this, yeah. you know. Because like it's kind of weird, actually. He uh, he's he's not on board at first because he likes living. Yeah. He, he likes just living wants to keep where by he himself. is. Yeah. Um, but it takes him like six hours to decide. You know what? I'm gonna go do that thing. Meanwhile, in Wheel of Time, it takes. Um, several days for them like it's not that they didn't want to leave Mm -hmm. i mean they did and they didn't but basically the reason that they left their uh their home plate their home base was uh because they were literally going to die if they didn't leave like they were going to get overrun by monsters oh okay yeah 